Okay. The Atomic Skinotony. Good morning. It is just about 8 o'clock in the a.m. on Thursday, my favorite day of the week, June 25th, 2020, in the lunar cycle. Misamsota, uh, the long rains. And starting off my round once again, checking beaver traps. We're checking beaver trap. <laughs> shall see if we were successful tonight had a lot of rain overnight <clears throat> um, don't know how accessible the drop-off point will be it should be okay should be okay if these roads are okay out here but we'll see um, if we got a beaver really hope we do I really would like to catch the second one so I can show some progress you know in the uh, in the project See what we got. Maybe we'll bump into leopard frog again while we're at it. Yep, I think I've seen a hopper down here. There he goes. There he goes. Leopard frog, where are you going? Off he goes. Oosh. Nothing in our trap. Again. But it looks like they might have come messed with the uh, bait a little bit. Maybe they just didn't come up at that right angle that I need them to. I don't know. I'm going to have to rebait tonight. Set her up again. Where's my stick? I didn't, I didn't, uh, my stick was here, unless somebody came and messed around up my trap and took my stick. Or unless the beaver decided to take it, it's a possibility. I did steal it from the beaver's lodge to begin with. <laughs> Guess I gotta go steal another one. See if I see any more hoppers along the way here or is it just one frog that I just keep running into at that same spot oh look at this we got a garter snake swimming I think yeah hold on I'm gonna get my iPhone out and record all right as it's coming into the sunlight it's apparently not a garter snake but a, uh, a stick swimming like a garter snake. It's very strange. In case, let's go grab a trigger stick. Beavers use this run a lot. I could position, reposition the trap over this way, but since there's nothing to anchor on. Oh, look at that, there's a stick probably beaver chopped from last night. All right, I'm gonna take that, trigger the trap. Might go drop in at Spopikimi since I'm already out and about. Um, I'm gonna wait and see if there's skunk calls. I did check the one raccoon trap, no success. See there, this is the problem should be triggered, should be snapped, but it's not closing. <sighs> Hold on a minute, I gotta pull this out. All right, so what happened this time, it looks like maybe the mud at the end point there 
kept this thing from turning all the way over the way that it should. Um, where's my stick? That's very frustrating. Very frustrating. There we have it. All right. I'm going to check out the pond a little bit. And here's that beaver. Come to check on what I did at the trap. It's right down here. They're not stupid. back up here. Oh yeah, he's still in the same place. So we're going around there. Oh, he's got some kind of little log there. Probably the uh, remains of my trigger stick I was using. Swimming right past my trap. Headed over to the lodge, probably. Anyway. Oh, the goslings are growing up so big. Just look like little geese now. Why do we still have this lone sentinel here? <laughs> so you got another gossing up here? Or are you just doing a different job? Who knows? Just got a message from the town of Colehurst. Sounds like I have a couple of babies, at least two, maybe three baby skunks in one of my traps there, and that mama is trying to free them. So I've kind of quickened my pace. Gonna round the pond and uh, get over there, see what I can do. Um, if mama's still messing around at the trap when I arrive, there is a chance, of course, that I can just set up another box real quick next to it and convince her to go into that box beside her babies, move them together. That would be the, the happiest ending. But I suspect mama won't be there milling around when I get there and that, uh, even if I were to kennel her babies overnight, um, most likely mama won't get trapped. I mean, this has been my, my experience. It's, uh, it's relatively easy to trap babies, not necessarily to trap mamas. Especially mamas who don't have any babies there anymore and are upset about what's going on, you know. Yeah, river's a little bit high. Not too bad. I think Chelsea and the kids are off to Waterton today. 
um, meeting her sisters or something up there. Kids are also this morning scheduled to get swabbed for COVID testing. They don't have it, but they're, uh, they're lonely for their dad and they can't go over there until they get COVID tested. So I'm gonna have them do that. I don't know what else will be on the agenda. It feels like it's gonna be a warm day. It feels like it could be a snaky day. I wouldn't be surprised. Ooh, look at the Saskatoons are just getting red. Getting red, unfortunately. I just seen a robin take off from that bush. Chances are those birds are gonna go ahead and eat the berries before they're ripe. It's like they always do here and then I don't get any Saskatoons from the pond. All my Saskatoons come from elsewhere. This is kind of sad. This is a really nice Saskatoon, but it seems to have been uh, negatively affected by the fire. Okay. No, no leafing out, no flowers. Looks like there was, was or are buds. I don't know, could just be very, very late. A lot of the trees here you can see like you know this was affected the base was burned a lot of the trees didn't uh, didn't fare well the cottonwoods I mean look at the look at the few who are actually green right you got one back in there and one right here but all these other trees even the ones that had leafed out um, just quickly or not yeah they're just quickly dying off these leaves they just are putting all their energy their last bit of energy into spitting some seeds out into the world I think is what we're seeing here you know spitting some seeds out getting maybe one last chance to spread some another generation and uh, I think these ones are done for the for the year and probably for uh, this kind of incarnation of a trunk. Should probably have to send up some new shoots. Drop these old trunks to the ground. Yeah, a lot of damage. Still some green out here, but mostly not. Yeah, so I've arrived at the Colehurst town office and I saw as I was pulling up that mama was at the trap so she ran off as soon as I got out of the vehicle but I'm sure she will come back um, in a moment so I'm gonna put this other box out here beside this one and see if we can get her to go in it We got four babies. One, two, three, four. All right, let's see if we can get your mama in there with you. See if we can get her to go in. Mama's there. Will she go in that second cage? There she is. Come on, mama, get in there. Go in there, go in there, you can be right by your babies. Oh. All right, Mama, go in that second cage. There she is. Yay, got you both. We got you all. Yep, yeah, Mama, you're stuck. You're coming with me. Me and your babies. How about that? Now that's some trapping. Yeah, 
I stopped at the house really briefly to uh, just make a pit stop and allow Poli to do the same. <laughs> Chelsea and the kids are just getting ready to go out to Waterton. Um, Thumper's sleeping, so we'll feed Thumper a little bit later. And yeah, and I've got a call for another skunk. So we're picking up, I don't know if it's an adult or a small one, but um, it's just in the neighborhood over here. We're gonna pick that one up and then go to the Wilderness Park and do some skunk releasing. Oh, a big adult. Nice big adult skunk. Hello. Yeah. I wonder how he's getting the egg out of there. I imagine magpies sometimes do, but I've never had skunks pull them out. Because I have him on video. Really, hey? Sucker. Maybe he's maybe he's got it. So I had it on video trick. that he got it and then he went around here and then he couldn't see me next. Really? <laughs> Tricky guy. All right, I have brought this crew to a very secluded and covered area where they're gonna find many recesses to explore and temporary shelter options in all of this flotsam log debris. So I think this is perfect. Um, I'm gonna let the, the babies out and then maybe expose the mom. Um, Got to think of what camera, because I want to escape out this way when I go. So maybe I'll set the camera up over here somewhere. I was hoping to get kind of an angle. Well, I'll pick it up as we go. All right, baby. Phase one, maybe release. Go ahead, little guys. Go ahead, you're gonna have to fall a little bit. Just a little. Whoa. All right. Now look, look, here's mama, here's mama, right there, there's mama, you go to mama. Come here, stinker. Don't get lost. All right, now hopefully mama understands what I'm trying to do here. And we'll cooperate with a nice, easy release. Let's see if I can get my camera to cooperate. There she goes. All right, mama, I'm out of here, I'm out of here. She ran off from them. This is the worry of these run off. Will she turn back? Babies are just there, mama. 
Well, oh, man. doesn't help that I'm falling through this log debris and making a big racket. Shit. Well, if they're all just running around here, mama less for the moment. I'm going to uh, hope that she circles back. She probably will. So I usually explore a tight circle first and then move out from there. So I'm going to wish them the best and uh, there's nothing more I could do in this situation. Oh, she's coming back. She's coming back. I see her. I see her. I see her. I'm going to get out my iPhone. There's Mama with the kids. Yay, she circled back for them. And they're exploring. So now I'm gonna get the heck out of here so that uh, I don't interrupt them again. And hopefully mama can keep her babies. Well, that was definitely the best skunk family relocation that I've ever done. And it wasn't perfect, you know, Two nights ago or so, I picked up two kits that belong to this family. So she's missing two babies. And I'm just assuming that these four are the rest of it and that there's not another one. Because there can be another up to three more in that nest. But, you know, six is not... Um, six to seven is like kind of average, hey? So I'm hoping this was it, but it's still, even at that, even missing at least the two, it's still the most perfect skunk relocation of a family that I've done um, because I was able to keep them together. You know, the whole ride in the back of the truck, their two um, cages were together so that they could see each other. She could see her babies. So really she was never separated from her babies the whole process, eh? Um, except for just the walk from my truck to where we set down the cages. And then, so I think, I think this is gonna have, you know, the best possible outcome, not to say that they're out of danger at all, because they've gotta find a whole new place to live and resources to live on. Um, I think that's doable down here for them, although it's not their preference. Their preference is, you know, the suburbs. <laughs> But in a pinch, that's a pretty good log jam. She should be able to find somewhere to kind of nest up and uh, at least, like, you know, keep her little family together. So I'm happy. That was a good one. It's now noontime, and I guess while we were down in the wilderness park releasing those skunks, I missed a call. A couple of calls, actually. So there's two that I haven't got back to yet. One sounds like a skunk trap job and the other one sounds like it deals with coyotes. Um, so we'll see about those. But uh, the first job that I'm going to, right in here somewhere, is uh, porcupine. Porcupine. I think it'll be number 18 here. So we're going to see if we can fish a porcupine out of a tree. Get him in the kennel and take him out of this yard. Yeah, that's a big trout. Yeah, the kennel. Pardon? The kennel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, um, we had a skunk in our garage this winter. Mm-hmm. And we eventually got it out, but... We thought we were going to have to phone you then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been really busy with skunks lately. Oh, yeah. It's this big one and the, um, the big green one, the darker green one. Okay. I guess they're all green. Oh, yeah. All right. 
Your uh, trap I, smells like skunk. <laughs> oh, it's had some skunks in there, and I probably smell like skunk. I just, I just been re moving skunks around all morning. So. Oh, yeah. He is what? coming. He's he, coming down. Hey, he, must have, might not. He, he must have um, been down here. Like, every time I look, he's just up there. Yeah, probably what's going to happen here. Yeah. Is he's going to scramble. Do you want me to move? Yeah. Out of my reach. Trying not to frighten him before I get to him, but. Yeah. He was pretty scared yesterday. Big guy, hey? There is he. Yeah, he's a good size. Give me my hoop back. <laughs> Have you ever got a quill? Oh yeah. You turned it the wrong way. <laughs> Come on. There you go. There you go. <gasps> oh. Poor guy. I know. A little bit beat up for sure, but not too bad. <laughs> not too bad. No, I'm sure no uh, significant injury. What Just a. Wounded pride. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with Porcupine in tow, we are headed to the next call, which is at the extreme south end of town. Uh, I'm going to go pick up an injured flicker, sounds like. And I think that's the kind of situation where I'll have to see what's, what's going on with the bird. I'm probably going to have to pass it on. If not to a... Uh, up north to one of the rehab organizations then um, to someone who can attend to it because it's the kind of situation probably where the bird's going to need a lot of attention through the day and obviously I don't have that much time through the day. I get little opportunities to run back and check on my pets every, every few hours or what have you but um, basically I'm on the move so not a good foster for birds that need a lot of attention right now but uh, this family you know is wanting to uh, shuffle it on to somebody who can care for it and uh, so I'm gonna be the first step in that process 
I did get a chance back there to phone the one number about the skunks and they're considering it they have a whole family there and I just let them know it, it can be expensive you know it doesn't always work out nicely like this morning um, so they're gonna consider that expense first and then <clears throat> I haven't called the coyote number back yet we'll, we'll get there Hey, you get to be on YouTube now. <laughs> hey, dude, right? Good, good. Good, so he's just in here? I got him in a little carrier. Hey. We got some sugar water in there, but I don't know if he's drinking it. Uh -huh. And I'm not sure. He doesn't seem like he can stand, so I'm not sure if it's a leg and if that affects his flight. Yeah. But he was on the road, kind of going across the road on his belly. Oh, he might have just got bumped and... So I had no clue what, what to do. Who knows what trauma... Fish and wildlife had no clue what to do. And the only other people I know is the Cocker and uh, Ecological and... Yeah, so there are ways that's out there. The, that's the closest people. That is the closest. And we're he, from Airdrie, he, so like I know them, and they're like, yeah, like... He we may... might be able to come help you if you can bring him here. And I'm like, oh, I got another guy I know I can phone. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see how he is. He may end up going up there anyway. Right. I gotta make sure there's no traffic if he's gonna cross the road. Hopefully he'll just go up the tree. That'd be nice. There we go. See you later, buddy. <laughs> he's not happy with me. Hey, at least you're free. Not dead. like it's going to be Silent Bob. What? Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. That's the one I saw. Well, yeah, there could, as we know, there could be more. <laughs> Let's see. Think. For the snakes? No. Well, it's getting there. It's getting there. Summer's going.
Northern Roll? Uh, no, he doesn't look like it. He's just been injured in, uh, in a way that he doesn't have a nub anymore, you know? Okay. So, he's always going to be a... Uh, well, I don't know how much longer he can live. He's a old snake. <laughs> but while he's around, he'll be a threat, you know? Well, that's what he was afraid of. He saw him in the when he kind of rolled around in this where he was sunny. Yeah, and I saw the tail from the foot of the sun. Given our past experiences, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the I was going to move these tires. Didn't have time in the spring. So. They love these tires. The tires, the rails, and the both of them. That's over. Stop, Rita. Don't be shoving. He's trying to shove in my way so he can get... You don't be shoving, Reed. This is a big, big snake. And he has no rattle because he, he's got an injury. Yeah. He doesn't have a rattle. Yeah, a rattlesnake. Here, this one. I'm going to aim it from here because you're not aiming it very good. <laughs> wait, wait, can you push over? You know I don't have that much rum. Hey, you guys, I'm okay. going to make you sit down and close the windows if you want. Know. Stop fighting. Okay. All right. Silent Bob. Hey, Bob. Why you called him Bob? This is Silent Bob. That's where he, the guy who, who find this thing. That's what I named him after catching him up a couple of different times last year and year before. Oh my. Oh my. Is that a big rattlesnake, huh? Yeah. Can I touch you? There we go. There's Silent Bob. What He's a big so guy. Silent. I can't even heal him. What a big guy. There you go. I know he's going one off. off he goes. I know he's going one off to another place. He's a big one. Good he's to see you. Stay down here, don't go back up the hill. Oh, will you get crushed by the I don't want you up there. Can I have a high five? <coughs> goodbye, video! I said goodbye! You have to say goodbye after. Almost 9.30 in the evening now, and back down at the canal to reset my one beaver trap and maybe set up a second. I have brought a second with me so we'll see. I need longer chains is part of the issue because uh, these chains are just barely going to my anchor points to reach the water. Not ideal. Anyway Gonna set this up. No sign of the leopard frog at the moment. <laughs> we'll see if the beaver shows up to watch me set the trap. All right, first trap is set here. Same place as I've been setting the last couple of nights. And a beaver, one of them, is right here. Looks like a muskrat back here. I'm starting to think that this beaver is actually living in this lodge where the muskrat is headed right now. I can't say for sure. Are you going to come in my trap tonight? It's probably a no. Let's go look over by this lodge and see if maybe there is a place I can anchor another trap over this way. Yeah, I'm starting to think that this is 
an entirely different beaver than the one that's on the other side of that levee by the river on the intake canal. All right. Yeah, I'd say this is, I'd say this is occupied. Oh, I didn't think so before because I never saw food cash for winter here, but looking pretty occupied. Hey there, muskrat. Meet Sopski. Nowhere really to, that I can see to anchor. Um, well, this bush, but I need a longer chain than what I've got that I'm working with. So maybe not tonight for that one. Oh, the beaver's already over there by my trap. Checking it out. It should smell like fresh caster over there. I just put some new stuff on. Man, wouldn't that be something to just set the trap and it goes right in. All right, I'm gonna go check by the river inlet. And I might set a second trap over there. Yeah, yeah, he's checking it out. He's definitely checking it out. It's right here. I think I'm gonna get him tonight. I think so. We'll see. All right, here's the river side of things. Doesn't look like any effort has been put into rebuilding the lodge here. So maybe I am wrong. Maybe that beaver back there is the one that is hanging out at the entry here. Hmm. And I don't see that beaver currently hanging out around here. I think I'm just going to leave the one trap for tonight. I have some confidence tonight that that trap is going to spring. <laughs> And if it doesn't, I think tomorrow I need to buy some longer chain. And then I can set up two traps um, along the canal and have a couple of different anchoring points. Yeah. Either that or I need to buy some auger anchors so I can make some anchor points. All right. Let's call it a day and come back in the morning. See if we got any beaver.